Jonathan Green. I'm back with Express Success, episode number seven, ARV. So ARV is really going to be one of your most important calculations for understanding how to use the fix and flip buy box. And it's also sometimes important with the buy and hold in addition to the rent roll. But your ARV is your after repair value. So how much something's going to be worth, worth after it's flipped. Uh, or best case scenario, one of the best homes on the market in an area. Um, and that's what gives your eye buyers an idea of what they're going to want to pay. If you've seen a lot of the um, formulas in the buy box, which I went over in episode six, you'll see that it's 70% of ARV, sometimes minus repairs, sometimes not. So if your ARV is 300,000 at 70%, that's 210,000. That's what the eye buyer wants to pay. Uh, and if it's minus repairs and you see 40,000 in repairs, then you're down at uh, 170. So that's gonna be tough, but you have to know the ARV because if you get the ARV correct, then you're servicing the eye buyer well. And what I would say is your ARV can't be your lofty best case scenario, which might fit what they want better, but will disappoint them later. So when you're looking for ARVs, you're obviously gonna use your MLS to find the comparable properties that have sold um, recently that look like your property in its best condition when it's flipped. Um, you really aren't gonna know going out what kind of eye buyer you're working with in terms of their renovation. If they do like more of what I call a Home Depot flip, which is pretty standard, um, nothing special, you know, lots of beige, um, regular countertops, that type of thing. Or if they really like to go high end, uh, then you know you might be able to get a little more, but that will be your experience that you get when working with the eye buyers to understand what kind of flips they actually do. Um, so you're gonna go into your MLS. So say you have a three bedroom, two bath home. Uh, if your area uses square footage, you wanna kind of be really close on the square footage. Um, yeah, sure, garage, you might wanna be the same when you're looking. You wanna really have it as exactly close to the, the home as possible. And you don't wanna be comparing colonials to split level homes or capes. Those are not comparables and won't help you with your ARV. So you wanna start in as small a radius as possible, probably even like a quarter mile. Uh, I don't know how your MLS works. A lot of them are super clunky, but I would search three bedroom, two baths in the same area. Uh, then I open them, highlight them all, put them onto the map. And when I look at the map, then I'm looking for the closest ones, obviously, to the property in question that we're submitting. Uh, and I'm gonna look at those first, see how they match up, and then I leave the best and closest results on the screen. The first search I do usually would only go back three months, but because of COVID, I usually go back about six months just so I have the best options, um, and that will give you your best idea. So once you see that, you wanna go through and see with the photos, what kind of properties are these? Are these bottom end before they were gonna be flipped or are these flip properties? And they don't have to actually be flips. You can just look at nicely marketed listings as the higher end um, part of things that you're looking at when you're determining an ARV. So say you have you know three of them, one says maybe 420 it sold and it was definitely a flip. Then you saw a nice home that sold for 415 that was just you know regular people live there but it was well done nothing needed to be upgraded and then you see you know an okay home that sold for 400 so how do you figure out when you have 400 415 and 420 if you are thinking they're going to do a flip and the 400 was not a flip now you can kind of discount that one and then you're at 415 and 420 so if i don't have too many others to look at i'd be hedging around the 410, 415 range, um, because I just don't think you ever wanna overpromise with an eye buyer. Um, it may make it harder to close the deal in the buy box, but it will also make it better when they can make more on it later. So if you uh, under promise and over deliver, and they can over deliver, meaning they sell the house much more, hopefully through you, because you also found the buy box that said they will relist, and then you get them more because you do a good job with the listing, over delivering is your mainstay for greatness. So you have to just be really uh, sure of what you're doing on the ARV. Um, and that's also gonna entail deciding what type of re repairs need to be done on a property and how you evaluate those. 
So if, you, if you're not used to running comps, it's something that you have to get really, really serious about just so you know what type of out value you're looking at. Um, and that's your best case scenario. But then in the next one, which is number eight, the repair costs, we're gonna get into how you even do that. And I, I have to be honest with you, if you've never evaluated repair costs, I, I don't know how you could submit something to a fix and flip buy box if you're just not sure. Uh, of what the repairs are going in. Uh, you can use the ARV and use the 70 if they're just doing 70, but if they have 70 minus repairs, you have to have a general idea and like you can go real haywire if you're not sure on repairs. Uh, and it's not very easy to just get contractors to come out and just take a peek for you because there's no guarantee that they're gonna get the job. So um, just a couple things to look out for, but your after a fair value is gonna be probably you know, one of your most important um, considerations. So the tighter that you do it and the more you get used to it, you know, looking at all the properties around, you can use RPR to look at the block values and see what you have there. Use your MLS to look for the most recent sales nearby that are comparable houses, and that will give you your best bet. And then when you go into your buy boxes and the last one, you're looking for the best formulas that will fit the property. And again, uh, it's much, better if you go low going in, not too low, because then they're never going to take a deal, um, but you really will be well served by overperforming at the end, especially if you get that listing. Thanks a lot. Good to see everybody again. And next time, number eight, the repair costs, then number nine, rental estimates. And then we've added a few. Number 10, I'm going to go over uh, phone script and in-person script. So I think it's going to be called the phone script, but we'll see. Thanks for listening to ARV and I'll see you next time. Yeah.